everyone, I'm Nicole Spore and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to stamp and color on these wood slice ornaments that I picked up at Michael's. It is so easy to stamp on them and create your own gift tags or ornaments just in time for the holidays. If you want to see how I created these, keep watching! <music> Hi everyone, it's Nicole. You only thought Handmade Holiday was over. I had so many projects I wanted to share with you, so I think I'm gonna sneak a couple more in. This is one of my favorites. It's wood grain ornaments. This is something that I did several years ago for um, Lawn Fawn, and then I have a video on my channel as well. I took some smaller wood ornament discs and I stamped them and colored them with Prismacolor colored pencils. We're gonna be using polychromos today, which I prefer. Prismacolors tend to be a little waxy, and I think you, you lose a little bit of the sharpness of the black outline in your ornament, and so I was really excited to give these another go. These ornaments I did find at Michael's. I have basswood and birch wood. Um, you can see right there on the screen on the right was the basswood, on the left was the birch wood. Birch wood I feel like was a little easier to color on but honestly I love how both of them turned out. In the example that I will color here on screen I am using the basswood. Now I'm going to mask off the tail on my cardinal. I actually just post posted, stamped it on a scrap of post-it tape that I had on my desk, and then I will stamp the branch. For my ornaments today, I want them to be super full and have lots of coloring, but still show the beauty of the wood in the background. These are such a fun idea. My goal with these today was to create something that um, is beautiful, but yet maybe could still be accomplished before the holiday. Um, I did mention I picked these up at Michael's. I think you can pick them up several places. And if you're handy and you have a branch, you could always um, trim down your own. I do think um, you may look up a YouTube video on it. I do believe they suggest baking them at a very low temperature to kind of, I think, seal the wood, I think is what they say. I'm not an expert by any means, but definitely keep that in mind. So I removed the really heavy twine that came in these because it's just not something I wanna use. I'm gonna replace it with a thinner twine and then I'm adding some decoration up at the end of the video. So do keep that in mind. I, and it's much easier to stamp these without that twine in them. If you wanna keep that twine, I would simply unknot it and hold on to it. I know that I won't use it for anything, so I cut mine off and went ahead and threw it away. So I have three different sizes. One of the things about this project is they are not gonna be uniform in size, so this one is much smaller than the others. I did use acrylic blocks for stamping this part of the project. I will show you um, when we get to the back of the ornament what you can do with it. Um, if you uh, want to give your Misty a try. It did work good. I kind of wish I'd used my Misty at the beginning, but this also worked. And then I realized really quick, don't forget your mask. <laughs> you could do as many of these as you want. You could switch up the birds if you want. I am using the Simon Says Stamp Winter Birds 6x8 stamp set. This is probably one of my all-time favorite stamp sets from the 2021 release. If you like the bird stamps, this is a beautiful one and the cardinal is my favorite. So I definitely picked my favorite from here. Um, all of the birds are beautiful and there's a couple of different branch options. So you could do all of the bird ornaments if you wanted to and I think that would be stunning. Once I have these stamped and I did stamp these with VersaFine Onyx Black Ink, I will be using Polychromos colored pencils to color these in. I briefly mentioned a minute ago, I chose Polychromos over Prismacolor because they are not waxy. And I did find that I think my colors hold up much, much better with the Polychromos. Um, 
but it's completely up to you. And I will tell you, if you are using polychromos or Crayola or whatever it is, um, I have a tip for uh, finishing these, which I'm going to do today. I am actually gonna apply, apply a spray varnish to seal the color and keep it from uh, smearing. So before I figured that out, and when I was trying some other things, I already knew a varnish would probably be the best. I didn't have any, and I tried not to go buy any. Um, and that was a mistake. I colored one way before I started these on camera, and it was beautiful, and I loved it so much, and I was so, so excited. And I tried to use Distress Glaze on it, and it smeared the entire thing. Don't be me, buy a spray varnish. <laughs> uh, I was so mad at myself. I will also tell you, if you, I haven't tried this, but I, I think it will work. If you stamp and mess up and you happen to be, you know, your, maybe your husband or someone you know, or you, because in my case, it's me who has this, I have a sander. I am gonna take the couple of ornaments that I didn't stamp well, and I'm actually going to sand them down and restamp them. So just a little idea for you there. So for my cardinal, I, or I should talk probably about my branch first. I used white and then I added a little bit of blue for that frosty look and I used a pretty heavy hand. I wanted the white to cover up the wood. Then I took my dark gray for my cardinal and I'm going over this with my darker red before we finish with the orangey red color, which is ironically the base color of our bird. But I think by adding the shading first, it really, helps with that depth and dimension of the cardinal. I loved coloring in this image. So the base of the cardinal is really three colors, dark gray, dark red, and an orangey red. Then the mask on the cardinal is a light gray and a dark gray, and the beak is this yellow, which I know is hideous, it does not go at all, but when we color over it with our orangey red and then even our dark red, it looks fantastic. So with the finished bird, it really does look good. Now I used a pretty light hand for those first two colors, but now with the orangey red, I am using a very heavy hand. I also wanna mention, I did not list my colors across the screen. Polychromo names are really long. I find that they cover up so much of the screen. So I listed them down below in the description by what I'm coloring. So it'll say Cardinal and it will list out the colors. Same thing on my blog. You can definitely click the link to the description and go check that out. You may wanna visit my blog anyway because I am doing a giveaway um, for my Handmade Holiday series. So definitely go over there and leave a comment if you are interested in winning a fun prize. So this is my cardinal. I'm gonna do that light gray over the mask. And then don't be afraid to go back with your dark, darker colors. So I'm kind of doing like a feathering motion, almost like I would do with Copics, and adding that shading back in. Um, maybe some of it got blended out too much when I went over with my orangey red color. Now, something to keep in mind, I always suggest keeping a pencil sharpener close by when using colored pencils anyway for that nice pointy sharp tip. When you're coloring on wood, they're gonna dull even quicker because of, it's not a super rough surface. In fact, I think it's pretty smooth and it colors pretty nicely, but there is some texture to it. And I do think that that kind of dulls your colored pencils even quicker. You'll notice that I, am often resharpening my pencils. That's especially important maybe in the leaves and things where there's a little bit finer tip or a little bit smaller area. For the first color combination for green, because I am using two today, this is kind of my pine green, I call it, color combination. Um, I'm considering these like pine needles maybe. I am using a blue-green color. It's a lighter color as the base for my leaves. These are actually gonna utilize four different colors, mostly green, but I am going to use a little white and a little brown to color these in. But I'm go going over the entire leaf with my lighter blue-green color, and I'm gonna do both groupings at the same time. Then we're going to grab our darker green, and we're going to color over one half of the leaf 
with that. So I'm kind of basically just going down half of each petal, not petal, leaf, and I'm adding in that dark green color. So we're gonna do that on both. Just go down the side. And I tried to keep it on the same side, I guess, for the most part. Once we've done this, we're gonna actually grab our white and I'm gonna go down the lighter side of the leaf with the white. And you wouldn't think it would make that big of a difference, but I love how it gives like almost a highlight and a frosty look to the leaves. Um, I don't know if you notice it as much on this grouping until we get to the second grouping of leaves and then it looks amazing. So kind of right about now, I'm starting to see it pop and I love how the leaves look. The final thing we're going to do is go in with a dark brown and we're going to add in some deeper, darker shading where each leaf meets the branch or is laying under the snow. This is really just going to highlight and add that depth and dimension to these leaves. And this is uh, the dark brown that I will be using on the branch. Once we have the dark brown added, we are going to take it to the underside of the branch and kind of trace that along. This is going to help ground the bird now. It doesn't feel like the snow and the leaves are just hanging out there in outer space, I guess. And then we're going to take our lighter brown color. I need to sharpen it and we're going to finish filling in that branch. I will go back to my darker brown color and I'm going to use this as that little uh, center part of our berries. That is going to be the dark color. It almost doesn't even look dark brown when you get the red added to the berries. The red will be the last thing I add to this and it will be a different color combination than what I used for the cardinal. Again, I have that listed in the description down below. If you also have polychromos and you would like to try some of these same color combinations, whether it be on paper or wood ornaments. For the other leaves, I am laying down a base that is a bright kind of chartreuse green color, but I promise it will look better here in a minute when we go back in with our darker kind of Kelly green and add that highlight in. I like that there's two different green color combinations on this ornament. I think it really makes all of the different parts pop. So I'm kind of going down the center of each leaf and then coming out from the center with my darker green color. And then I did find that it looked best if I went over the whole leaf again with my lighter green, it just kind of blended it all out. If you get some colored pencil kind of, you know, flakes on your ornament, don't brush them off. They could smear. Go ahead and I just blow them away. Now I colored these berries a little different than I will the ones on the back of my ornaments. I went with a, the light color first, then I added in my darker red and finally a little brown for shadow. I found that it was a little bit, I like it a little bit better if I do the brown, the dark red, and then this light color for the berries on the back. So you might keep that in mind. You might like that better too. This either way works fine. I just think that it was a little bit more similar to how I colored the bird when I added the shading first and then the color on top. Now that everything is colored, I'm gonna color all three ornaments just the same. And then I actually place them all in a box and I'm going to use some Krylon varnish to spray the front of my, oh, pardon me, not yet, you guys. First, we're gonna take some white gouache and I am going to splatter it all over the ornaments to give them a look of snow everywhere. So this is what I used. I used permanent white gouache. I tapped it on with a small paintbrush let that dry completely. Then I did take some glossy accents and add it to the beaks on my cardinals and I let this dry completely as well. Once these were completely dry, I did take my ornaments out in a box and I used this Krylon varnish to seal in the color and also make it so that the color doesn't smear. Because 
Colored pencils tend to smear or fade. This makes them color safe and I just feel good knowing that they're going to hold up or the color is going to hold up and not smear if touched. It will be dry to the touch in two hours and dr completely dry and safe to uh, work with in 15. I let mine sit overnight and then I finish them the next day. I'm going to flip them over. I've removed the insert from my Misty and I'm going to take Seasons Greetings from the Winter Birds stamp set and then I'm going to take another favorite stamp set from 2021 Simon Says Stamp, Winter Flower, and take the to and from from this set. I love the size and scale of the to and from and I think they'll be perfect with this and fill in the back of my ornament. Now for the first two ornaments I stamp, I was able to not have to move any of my ornaments. Remember these wood slices are all different sizes. I am using the VersaFine Onyx Black again to stamp the season's greetings and to and from and go to get, get a good impression and even be able to stamp it again like I did there. Now I kind of thought I would try to fit a smaller sentiment onto the back of these, but ultimately I decided I would prefer to do maybe some little uh, holly and berries instead because I think that a little pop of color will be more interesting than more text and I'm so, so glad that I did. I did have to completely clean my sentiments and move them around for the last of the ornaments. So do keep that in mind just because it's much smaller than the other two, but that's totally okay and doable. I just wanted to make note of that because you, I don't want you to be disappointed if you keep them in the same place and they don't line up. So just make sure you check before you stamp them. I also want to note that the wood slices, depending on the width, might be too tall for your Misty. I tried mine first. It is a little tall, but I was able to make it work. I did test it on one of the ornaments I ruined uh, prior to starting this, and that was why I went ahead and did it, because I noticed that it did work. Um, I don't want you to maybe break your Misty and be upset, so you can always use your acrylic blocks to do this step. This is the smaller ornament where I had to move things around a bit. And I love these greetings on the back. I think they're just the perfect finishing touch. Now I opted to just go back to my acrylic blocks for this next step where I am going to stamp and color the holly and berries from the Winter Birds stamp set. I'm stamping the berries on each and then two leaves on each as well. I found it easier to just use my acrylic blocks because I kind of move them around on each one however they fit the best. You can definitely do this however you would like for the back of the ornament. Or you can leave it off all together. I've sped this up a little bit just to save time because all of the coloring will be exactly the same, but I did want to show you how I colored those berries a little different as I mentioned a few minutes ago when I was coloring the berries on the front of the card. So again, dark brown in the center, but then I'm going to take my dark brown and use that as shading on the berries before I go in with my two red pencils. Now my dark red and I'll finally finish with the lighter red. Then we're going to take our chartreuse green and our Kelly green and finish off the leaves. I'm super glad that I opted to do a little image on the back. I like that little pop of color and I think it's the perfect finishing touch. Once I'm completely done stamping and coloring, I'm going to seal the back of the ornament as well. Again, I don't want the colored pencil to rub off. I don't want it to smear and I want it to be color safe. So I will spray these. I sprayed them. Um, make sure you're spraying in a well ventilated area. It is varnish. It's really stinky um, and let it sit and completely dry. You can do this a couple times if you feel like it needs more than one coat. For my finishing touch, I am going to take some hemp string and then a couple of colors of ribbon and some bells from my stash to finish off these ornaments. And I wanted to add a lot to the top of them because I really wanted them decorative. You can add as much or as little as you want here. Everything is from my stash. 
You could also from, I know like Walmart sells, sells some little pre-made uh, bows that maybe have some pretty little decorative to them and they have like those little twist ties to them that you could just tie these to the ribbon on your tag if you don't wanna make your own. Um, my cream ribbon is old Stampin' Up, um, old, old <laughs> Stampin' Up, but this gold ribbon actually came in one of the Simon Says Stamp kit limited edition kits from this year I had only a small length left and I didn't have enough to tie into complete bows so that's why I used some cream ribbon with it but I was able to get about four of these little lengths so I have one left over I can use on another uh, tag project at some point but I was able to tie in a little length of this into each which I liked with the gold bells the bells I've had in my stash forever I think I did provide a link to some Tim Holtz bells um, I'd like to pick those up because I like how they have a little bit more of a vintage look to them. Uh, ideology bells, I believe they are. But anything you maybe have there, you can usually pick up quite a few of these things at a discount store um, if you don't. So I tied the bells first, then I tied the ribbons to in between the bells. Then I'm going to thread the hemp, which is also May Arts and available at Simon Says Stamp. I'm going to tie that hemp string to my wood slice ornament and I'm going to knot it up here at the top so it holds the ribbon in place so it doesn't slide all over the place and then I will pull both strands up and knot them up at the top. I am going to do this for each one of the ornaments that is going to kind of make it a little bit more secure. You could always use hot glue to glue that in place if you wanted to. Um, I just tried to stay away from hot glue because I always burn myself. <laughs> um, I don't know about you guys but I always burn myself. I There are times you absolutely have to use it though. And there is that. I'm gonna fuss with it. I'll trim up the ends, all that good stuff. And that is going to finish off our beautiful cardinal wood ornaments. You can absolutely stamp and color on wood ornaments and create beautiful, beautiful gifts or ornaments just for yourself. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these handmade holiday wood ornament tags featuring Simon Says stamps. The supplies I used to create my tags are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring using Lawn Fawn for smaller wood ornaments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a new card making video. A huge shout out and thank you to my Patreon members. If you would like to join us over on Patreon, click the link in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.